Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah ahl sunnati wal jama'a and the shabab as-salafiyin should not preoccupy themselves with anything that diverts them from Allah Azza wa Jal. And they should not preoccupy themselves with those major issues, those major masail that are reserved primarily for the ulama and the tulab al-ilm al-mutamakkineen, those students of knowledge that are well grounded in those issues, such as declaring people to be innovators and making takfir of people. That that is something reserved for those people with the tools to do so, which is al, al manafia And here's what our Sheikh Imam Al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of the major scholars of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah that is living and well known today for his aqidah especially, and returning affairs back to, as well as his ifta, his service in providing fatwa for the Muslims in general, he was asked, may Allah be good to you. What is your advice for the students of knowledge who have preoccupied themselves with takfir, declaring another Muslim to be a disbeliever, or tibdir, declaring another Muslim to be a innovator, an innovator? And following up the mistakes of the Sunni and Salafi scholars and du'at and have thereby busy themselves away from knowledge and they claim that they follow by that the way of Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan and other than him from the people of knowledge. So this is a shameful claim and it is either based upon lying deception, the one who makes these claims, or a level of ignorance because some people believe they're following the way of the Mashiach and they'll say oh I studied with the Mashiach or I follow the Mashiach or this and that and the other all of these claims but when you look at what they say in practice it differs with the ulama and especially the major scholars and especially as I've emphasized on countless occasions those ulama like Imam al-Albani and Imam bin Baz and Imam bin Uthaymeen, and Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wad'i, Allah yarhamuhum jameen, that we see from their asloob and the way that they dealt with these issues because of their, their level of knowledge and because of their fiqh, it wasn't just a, a memorization of text, but it was also their fiqh and understanding how their fatwa and how these messiah would affect youth in other countries and how the fitna would snowball if, you, if they are not cautious in what they give a fatwa about and in looking at the issue. And as the ulama say, that part of giving a ruling is having a correct understanding of it. Al-hukm ala shay far'na la tasawrihi. That the ruling regarding something, uh, a part of it is having a correct view of it, you know, a correct understanding of the issues surrounding it. So Imam Fozan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he responded to that question by saying, This is fitna. And refuge is sought with the law, busying oneself with the shortcomings of the people and driving the people away from the scholars, the students of knowledge, and the callers to a law. This is fitna, and therefore it is not permissible to act according to it, nor to follow those who practice it. What is obligatory is that the Muslims advise one another. ad nasiha, the religion is sincere advice. What is obligatory is to help one another in bitter wa taqwa, ala bitter wa taqwa virtue and righteousness and piety. 
What is obligatory is to act upon the knowledge. And as for keeping ourselves busy with so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and drive people away, this is riba, this is backbiting. And riba is a major sin from amongst the major sins, and it does not rectify anything. It separates and damages. The one from whom we, seek a mis we see a mistake or a shortcoming, we advise him, either by writing to him or verbally. And as for us sitting down together and backbiting him, then that is haram. And what results from it is the splitting of the Muslims and driving away the people from the students of knowledge. This act is therefore absolutely impermissible. And they have lied against us and against other than us by saying that this is the way of so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. No, we warn against this in our lectures and in our books and in we, we warn against this way, yes. If we look at that, and that's, this wasn't just going to be a sit down where we just read the Sheikh's fatwa, but I want us to analyze some of the important points so that way we can see the applicability, we can understand what we can gain from that. And in that, if we look, and I want you to use this as a, a, a barometer or a, a, a tool to measure, that when you listen to da'is, people who are giving you uh, uh, knowledge on tapes and on the internet and, and have translated for you and, and, and on forums and so forth, look to what they say and see if it, how it matches up to what this great imam just said. Look to see, are they busying you with so-and-so and so-and-so? -and -so? Each week they're taking someone who was on the sunnah yesterday, off the sunnah today. If, if you find that they fit that criterion, then that's a, a warning for you to avoid listening to that. Because it is what the Imam said, it's fitna. It's fitna. That doesn't mean we don't declare Ahla Bidah to be Ahla Bidah. No. But what it means is, is that we have rifq and lean as our Imam. Imam Abdul Masan al Abbad al Muhaddith said in his treaties, Rifqin, you know, uh, Rifq, gentleness uh, between Ahlul Sunnah. So if we practice those types of uh, ways of dealing with one another, we will not be spending our, our time and our energy attacking other Salafis and other people who are calling to the same minhaj and then leaving off Ahl bidah to spread secularism, to spread liberalism, to spread all kind of other wicked deviant ideologies and fisk and the call to this ideology and the call to that ideology, leaving them comfort, comfortable and allowing for them to uh, control the narrative in the Muslim community and outside the Muslim community. Because if Ahl sunnah were united, and united based on Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not making tabdi and tafsiq and takfir of one another, perhaps we would control the narrative and perhaps we would have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do so. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.